Hello, church. We're in part two of our uh, postcard from Jude. Uh, but let me say beforehand that I hope everybody's having a great Labor Day or had a great Labor Day by the time you watch this. Uh, God willing, and uh, my day goes smoothly. I will be smoking some chicken thighs. Labor Day afternoon it will be delicious. I know it'll be great. Your mouth is watering already just thinking about it. I uh, also want to just say what an honor it is to serve with such a great preaching team. Uh, it was great for me to be back in the pulpit yesterday. It's the the place where I feel God most uh, uh, often. And But to share that pulpit with such a great preaching team is an honor. So so we're in the book of Jude. Again, we're kind of in second part two uh, of our start. And we know uh, that Jude is the half-brother of Jesus. And what you need to know, his birth name was Judas. Well, you can already figure out why he drops that and goes by Jude, right? So after the op upper room moment and all that happened with the Judas, the original disciple, I imagine that he wanted to create some distance. So let me read to you verse three. It says this, Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. All right, so it, it seems like not a lot's going on there until you realize that he he had other plans. He he originally wanted to write them about their salvation, about holiness and righteousness and all those kind of things. But something must be happening at the place this letter is sent to that causes him to pause and to send something else. It also tells us that Jude probably wrote other letters that we do not have. So we want to be mindful of that as well. But here's what I want to say to you. How far are you willing to go for your faith? How far are you willing to go for your faith? So it's such a big question, I think, that uh, just so that you have a heads up, we're going to do about eight weeks uh, on fearless faith uh, in the fall. I'm going to lead that series. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to just answer that question. How far are you willing to go for your faith? Are you willing to go all the way? Are you sold out for Jesus? Are you all in? You are a walking uh, testimony to his love and grace, and it touches every aspect of your life? Or are you more of a cultural Christian? Dip in for high holidays, go when you're pressured uh, to church, or serve occasionally, if ever. You know, there's a huge difference about how your faith is demonstrated in life. So, I think the key word we need to realize here, there really are two of them, but the one I want to talk about most is the word entrust. So what Jude says to uh, the people who are hearing this letter is that God has entrusted us with faith. So when I think about what we've been entrusted with that we're responsible for, you've been entrusted with your life. It's a, Your life is a gift from God. And what you do with that life, what you leave in its place, all of that matters. But you also are entrusted to a number of vital relationships. You're entrusted with a spouse, right? I know one day I'm going to have to give an account to Jesus for how I treated Didi. It's it's part of what makes my love for her a, a driven kind of love is that I know I'm going to have to give an account for that. I was entrusted with children. And if you've been entrusted with children or grandchildren, you know the significant responsibility that comes with being entrusted with something. So Jude reminds the audience that, listen, you have been entrusted with faith, with faith, that you have to contend for it, which means you have to get up every day and battle for that faith. Now, here's what I want you to understand about the word entrust. In this moment, uh, Jesus doesn't need you to be his lawyer, right? When we talk about defending the faith, he does not need you to be his lawyer. Jesus needs no lawyer. What he needs are witnesses. Witnesses, you and I have been called to be a witness to the ongoing work of Jesus Christ that began in the first century, that ripples throughout time, and is effective and present today. We witness to that. And how do we witness to that? We witness by what we've seen God do. We witness by our own actions of faith and trusting God for what we can't see. Ultimately, that's the definition of faith, is to trust God for what you cannot see. Right, So I, I trust that my engine starts. I don't know how that happens. I push a button. I literally push a button inside my truck. My engine starts. I don't know how that happens. I push that button by what? By faith. So we exercise our faith through prayer, 
through church participation, through Bible studies, but more importantly, we exercise our faith in relationship to other people. We've been entrusted with a faith to share with the people we've been entrusted with. This is why community and church communities are so critical. We need each other. We need each other in that moment. So would, would people say about you that they have a sense and feeling of your faith as you move through, through life? Or would they not have any evidence of your witness of Jesus? This is a question we have to ask ourselves and to think about, right? So I hope this is helpful as Jude's trying to lay the groundwork that you have been given a great gift in your faith. You've been entrusted with it. Now share it. Be his witness, not his lawyer. Amen? I love you so much, church. Can't wait to be with you again next week. Mm -hmm.